Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Dock Station on your retail mode of your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. There is a couple things I will mention though. Since we are not in dev mode, there is more potential chance that Microsoft could lock down on this. That may mean that they may block accounts that are actually using this or they may ban consoles that are using this. I do find it unlikely, but it is a possibility. And with the latest updates to retail mode and how it's currently installed and set up, I feel it is in a better state right now that it's actually okay to use it. However, there is still a chance that this can happen. To be fully safe, I would recommend creating a new burner account for your Xbox. So don't use your main Xbox Live account, use a secondary account. So at least if they ban an account, it won't be your main account. And you can still use it and access it via your main account, so you don't have to worry about it in that regard. But that's a little tip that can make this a little bit safer. But of course, use caution and just know that it is possible that something may go wrong in the future. And this is not for a sure 100% safe method, but I'm still going to be showing you how to set it up in today's video. So what we're going to be doing is coming to our Xbox. We're going to be clicking the Y button to search. And we're going to be searching for Edge. And with this, we're going to be opening up the Microsoft Edge browser, which shows up right here. And it should be installed by default as long as you're on the latest version of your Xbox. If this is your first time opening up, we simply just complete setup right here. Click confirm a few times to get rid of all this information. And just like that, it should all be gone away. From this point, we're going to be coming up to the URL bar here at the top. You can use your left stick to scroll around. We're going to be clicking the A button. Here, we're going to be clicking the X button to remove all this data. And we're going to be coming to this URL, HTTPS colon backslash backslash. And we're going to be typing in gamr 13 github.io once you have this fully typed in like this i will also leave this linked in the description down below so you can see exactly how it's written we're simply going to be clicking the start button on our xbox so once we are here and we have this page loaded up there's going to be two specific applications we're going to be focusing on in today's video the first one of course is going to be duck station which is our free ps1 or psx emulator and the second one is going to be durango ftp and this is going to allow us to transfer files directly from our pc or even android device directly to our retail mode on our retroarch so we can transfer over the necessary files for duck station so what we're going to be doing is installing both of these so for duck station what we need to do is come here to duck station come to download app click the a button to select it and then it should open up our store now if you are having issues where your screen goes black or it won't actually open up the application simply restart your xbox and simply going to be clicking get then we can click got it and then duck station will start to install we can click the a button here to see the installation process and then simply wait for this to install and of course we're also going to need to install the rango ftp from this point, we can also feel free to come back to our web page. We're then going to be scrolling down until we see the Rango FTP. And from here, we're also going to be coming to the bottom left of this. We're going to be clicking on download app. Again, we're going to be clicking the A button. And again, we should brought to the store page for Durango FTP. We're simply going to be clicking the get button on this again, and it should be added to our account. And again, this should automatically start to download. And again, we can click check download progress to come here and review that. So what we're going to be doing from this point is launching Duck Station. It should show up on your dashboard here. Otherwise, we can click Y and we simply need to search for Duck Station. And it should show up here. Simply click the A button to open it up and then Duck Station should open up for the first time. From this point, we will be brought to the Duck Station UI and here we'll have a couple of things that we can do. But the first thing we're going to have to do is set up and install a PlayStation 1 BIOS into our Duck Station so we can actually launch and play games. So for today's video, if you do want to transfer anything to your Xbox, you can of course use the Rango FTP. However, it is also possible to transfer and use a lot of different things from your external drive. And that's what I'm going to be using in today's video because it makes it easier to switch back and forth between retail and dev mode. And also gives me more flexibility with adding games and gives me a lot larger storage to work with. And now we're going to be loading up the Rango FTP. So from this point, once we open up the Rango FTP, we'll see a couple of different things. Sadly, with this version, we are limited to 30 gigabytes. As you can see on the right, we currently have 29.2 free on our storage. And that means we are limited to 30 gigabytes on the internal storage on our Xbox. But thankfully, we can do a lot with external storage, including loading and playing games from there. From this point, we're going to be staying on the Rango FTP. We're going to be coming here to the bottom left to the start button right here. Simply click A on this. And now we're going to be starting our server. From this point, a couple things are going to show up on our screen. So in the middle here of the screen, we will see addresses of this device. And just below this, underneath our Xbox name, we will see an IP and some extra information here below. And we are actually going to be needing this to access the FTP and transfer files to the internal storage on our Xbox. So I'm going to be blurring this out and hiding this, although you will need this to access these files a little bit later. Now, while we're on the topic of FTPs, it is possible to transfer files from basically any device, a PC, a Mac, or even a mobile device. Anything that you can actually install an FTP browser and locate to and transfer files will work without any issues on this. 
Now from this point for the rest of the video, I'm gonna be continuing on a Windows device, but as mentioned, it is possible on other devices. So I have seen that it is possible using the file browser in Windows. However, for me, it seemed to give me a lot of issues and for some reason would not work. So because of that, I'm actually gonna be using a full dedicated FTP client. And if you are having issues as well, you can feel free to use this instead. So what I'm gonna be using for today's video is FileZilla. I'll be leaving a download link in this in the description down below. It is gonna be free to use, so you don't need to worry about that. We're gonna be coming here to quick download links. We're gonna be downloading the FileZilla client. It's gonna automatically pick up that we're on Windows. Simply click download here. It'll then give us this pop-up and we're gonna be using the free version, the first one here on the left. Simply click download and then our download will begin. From this point, you simply need to locate your downloaded .exe file. I have mine on my desktop right here. Double click to install it. Click yes on the pop-up. Once this pop-up comes up, we're gonna be clicking I agree. Here's where they do add a bit of bloatware to this. We're simply gonna be declining this unless you actually want this, but most people will not simply click decline. Click next. You can choose if you wanna install it on the whole computer or just for you. For me, I'm just gonna be choosing just for me. Once you have this selected, click next. You can now feel free to enable and check on any of these options as well. Simply click next again, and then choose your install location. Once you're happy, click next. And finally, click install. We can leave start filezilla now checked, click finish, and then filezilla is gonna open up. From this point in the host section, we're simply gonna be entering the URL that was showed up on our Xbox underneath the addresses on this device. We're then gonna be looking for the port. Once this is entered, we're gonna be coming to the port and the port should be set up automatically in Durango FTP as 21. So unless you changed it, this should work. And from this point, we're simply gonna be clicking quick connect, click okay, and then we should be connected to our Xbox. So how FileZilla works here on the left, we have our computer. And on the right, we have the file location that we're connecting to, which is our Xbox. So here we can see all of our Xbox folders. Now, if we come to our local folder right here and we come to our DuckStation folder, which will be the folder here, Gold Sky, it is possible to put files in here. However, I did seem to have issues actually reading and locating to these files after the fact. So I created a new folder here for BIOS and games, but neither of these seem to load correctly. So if you're gonna be putting games on the internal storage on your Xbox, we can come here to our S drive and I'd simply recommend creating a new folder here. So right click, create directory and just name it whatever you want, BIOS or games or anything like that. And just transfer your files over here. Now for me in today's video, I'm actually gonna be putting everything on an external drive. But feel free to put any files here you want and they should load up no problem inside DuckStation as well. So these are all nice things to have. Now, in regards to your files, there's a couple of things we're going to be needing. One is a BIOS file to actually load up and actually play games in DuckStation. And the second is, of course, going to be game files. I will mention I'm not going to be showing you where to download either of these in today's video. You will have to find and source your own. So feel free to dump or create a backup of your existing files or your games, or you can go online and download them. But as mentioned, I won't be sharing any links. So with your BIOS files, you simply drag and drop your BIOS files over to your Xbox or to your external drive if you're going to be doing that like me. And the same thing are going to be for your games. Now, depending on how your games come, if you download or dump your games, there's a couple of different formats they can come in. There is .bin and .q formats like you can see I have on screen right now, or there's other options where it come in a .iso. And thankfully, most of these game files will work inside DuckStation. However, if you download your games, they will most likely come in a .7zip. As you can see, it is here for me or a .rare file. And sadly, these will not work directly inside DuckStation. So we will have to extract these games before we can bring them over. And I'm gonna be doing that next. So I'm gonna be opening up the Windows File Explorer for this again, and we are gonna need one of two applications to extract our games. So we're gonna need WinRare or 7-Zip. I'll leave both of these linked in the description down below. But for today's video, I'm currently using 7-Zip, although the process for WinRare is basically exactly the same. So what we need to do is right-click on our game in a 7-Zip format. If you're on Windows 11, we need to show more options. We then hover over 7-Zip, and I'm simply gonna be clicking Extract here, and our game is gonna to start to extract. Now, depending on how large your game is and depending on the device you're using, this can take a couple seconds to a couple minutes to extract. So you just need to be patient here while this extracts. Just like that, my game is extracted. And as you can see, it's extracted into a couple different things, a .q and a couple of .bin files. And that's exactly what we're looking for. And once you're happy with that, again, you can feel free to drag and drop them over to your Xbox's internal storage in a new folder, or you can put them on an external drive like me. And now we're going to be heading back over to our Xbox and we're going to be setting up the final things for this. Once we're back over on our Xbox and you've transferred all the files you want over, we can stop our transfer from Durango FTP and simply back out of here. We can then head back over to DuckStation. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is coming down to our settings and we need to set up our BIOS file. So to do this, we're gonna be clicking RB or R1 until we get to the BIOS settings right here. We're then gonna be clicking BIOS directory. And here I'm gonna be locating to my external drive or you can locate to wherever you have put your BIOS files on your Xbox. So I'm gonna be coming to parent directory a couple of times until I get back out to my main drive. And then your external drive connected to your Xbox will most likely come up on a D, E, or F drive. 
So for me, it's currently on my D drive right here. I'm going to be clicking the A button to open this up. And then I'm going to be locating to where my folder is. And then I'm going to be clicking use this directory. And this folder location contains my PlayStation 1 BIOS. Now, when you're setting up your BIOS files, there is an option to either auto detect or select a specific BIOS. So depending on what you have and depending on the BIOS that you have inside, you may need to select the different files for the different console versions that you have. So you can set up any of the BIOS files here with the correct version that you have. From this point, we're then gonna be setting up our game location. So I'm gonna be clicking L1 a couple times. I'm gonna be coming to the game list settings. And here again, we're gonna be adding a new search directory for our Xbox. So I'm gonna be clicking add search directory. Again, I'm gonna be coming back out to my external drive. And here I have my PlayStation 1 games. I'm gonna be clicking use this directory. And then this should scan and select the Xbox games from my console. I'm gonna be clicking the B button to back out of here of the settings. And then I'm gonna be opening up my game list. And here it should list all the currently added PlayStation 1 games I have on my external drive. So here I have a couple different games that I own. So what I'm gonna be doing is starting for today's video as an example for Tekken 3. Simply clicking the A button to open this up. And it may take a couple of seconds for your game to be loaded up. And just like that, Duck Station should load up and start playing your game. And just like that, you should be able to play PlayStation 1 games on your Xbox. To open up the on-screen menu, you can simply click the select button or the button on your Xbox controller with two boxes on it. And then your on-screen overlay should appear here. From this point, we're gonna be exiting our game. And we can take a look at a couple different settings we can set up. So we're gonna be coming down to our settings tab right here. And as mentioned, we can use R1 and L1 or LB and RB on our controller to switch between the different things. So the first thing we're we'll gonna be taking a look at is our controller settings right here. And by default, everything worked really well for me. Everything was automatically detected for my Xbox controller, both the series and the normal Xbox controller on my Xbox. But here you can set up your controller type to do a couple different things here if you wanna set up different controllers. And you can also remap any of the buttons here by simply coming to any button. So for example, the up button, we can click the A button here. And we can then select the button on our screen. So for me, it's gonna be the up directional button on our D-pad. And then we can set that up and map any buttons. So if you wanna come in here and make any changes, you can feel free to do it. And there's a lot of different menu combinations here. And we can even set up the different controller ports. So if you would like to set up different things, these all work really nicely here as well. If we come to the right, then we can also set up some hotkeys. And here we can set up fast forwarding, turbo buttons, and a bunch of different things here. I'm not gonna be going to everything here in detail. The only two things I will mention that are interesting to look at. One is the open quick menu button. So as mentioned, it is the select button or the two box buttons on our Xbox. We can come in here and bind this to anything you like. So if you would like to change it, feel free to do that here. And we also have the fast forward button, which will fast forward our console and emulation to make it go faster, which can be a nice one to take a look at. The rest you can feel free to play around with. The next thing we have is our memory card settings and here you can set up how you want to do this. By default, it will separate game cards per game title. So each memory card in emulation will be its own game, which makes it easy to save and backup saves. Rather than saving or backing up a full memory card, you can save and backup one game, which I do like, but if you would like to make any changes, feel free to come in here. Then finally, we have our display settings. So I left everything by default, but you can feel free to come in here around and play around with anything that you would like. I didn't have any issues with the default settings in the couple of games that I tested. And overall, I found that it worked really, really well. The rest of the settings are nice to have. You have achievement, audio, and a couple different advanced log settings here as well if you want to take a look at. But overall, I found that this emulator works really, really well by default, and I really like what they've done here. Anyway, guys, I want to take this moment to give a huge shout out to the channel members. Sean Daly, Devante Hunt, Liz Lingus, and Q43OL. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. If you'd like to have your name shout out in future videos or some other perks, be sure to click the join button on any video on the channel. It would really help me out. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always... Keep it saucy. Peace.